Hello? I want to thank some Mars. And I have some additional information you need to know about uh, the coup d'etat that I'm saying is happening. Uh, before we get to that, this all runs together. The whole Russian story apparently is BS, which I said right from the start because I know enough about computers to know that you're not going to track trace the Russians. You're just not going to do it. They're not that stupid. They may be barbarians sometimes, but they're not stupid. Anyway, so before we get to that, well, this is all part of it. Uh, Ex-British ambassador, is, who is now on WikiLeaks operative, claims Russia did not provide Clinton emails. They were handed over to him in the D.C. park by an intermediary, intermediary disgusted for disgusted Democratic whistleblowers. Craig Murray is former British ambassador to Uzbekistan, the social of Julian Assange told DailyMail.com he flew to Washington, D.C. for emails. He claims he had a clandestine hands, handoff in a wooded area near American University with one of the email sources. The leaker's motivation was discussed of the corruption of the Clinton Foundation and tilting in the primary election playing field against Bernie Sanders. So in other words, this is probably a crazy Bernie supporter. Murray says, those sources had legal access to the information documents came from inside leaks, not hacks. Now here we have an eyewitness, uh, whereas you had the Washington compost is sitting there saying they came from the Russians. They have no evidence. Here we have an eyewitness. Regardless of whether the Russians hacked into the DNC, documents WikiLeaks published did not come from that, Murray insists. Murray is a controversial figure who was relieved of his post as British ambassador amid allegations of misconduct, but it's close to WikiLeaks. So, basically I just read the Headlines there. They like Daily Mail's uh, format. But you, you know, basically heard it. They, uh. You know, this guy says uh, it came from insiders, which we've already heard before. There's people in the government who were fed up with what was going on. You see, uh, some some liberals do have some integrity to them. Not a lot of them, but some of them do. Okay, Murray's claims about origins of Clinton, Clinton campaign email comes as U.S. intelligence officials are increasingly confident Russian hackers infiltrated both the DNC and email account of top Clinton aide John Podesta. In Podesta's case, his account appears to have been compromised through a basic phishing scheme, the New York Times reported on Wednesday. U.S. intelligence officials have reportedly told members of Congress during classified briefings that they believe Russians passed the documents on to WikiLeaks it's part of an influence operation to swing the election in favor of Donald Trump. But Murray insists that insisted that DNC and Podesta emails published by WikiLeaks did not come from the Russians and were given to the whistleblower group by Americans who had authorized access to the information. Neither of the leaks came from the Russians, Murray said. The source had Legal access to the information. Documents came from inside leaks, not hacks. 
He said leakers were motivated by discussing corruption with Clinton Foundation and tilting a primary election playing field against uh, Bernie Sanders. Bernie said he retrieved the package from a source during a clandestine meeting in a wooden area near American University in Northwest D.C. He said the individual he met with was not the original person who obtained the information, but an intermediary. So there you have it. Basically, they're saying this wasn't Russians at all, which we already knew, but they're still coming out with this stuff to try to steal the election. We have a coup d'etat in progress. Okay. Now, let's take a look at There's a, there's a very important date after the 19th. Electors meet and vote for president, vice president on the 19th. There's a bunch of technical stuff there. Uh, December 28, 2016, electoral votes, certificates of votes must be received by the President and the Senate, and our events no later than nine days after the meeting of the electors. States face no legal penalty for failure to comply. This is vital. I'm going to tell you why in a minute. If votes are lost or delayed, our Congress may take extraordinary measures to retrieve duplicate originals. On or before January 3, 2017, archivists and or representatives in Office of Federal Registrar meet with Secretary of Senate and Clerk of the House in late December or early January. This is in part a ceremonial occasion. Informal meetings may take place earlier. Now here's the big one, January 6, 2017. The Congress meets in joint session to count the electoral votes. Congress may pass a law to change this state, this date. Which means they could move it, move it later if they want, which would not be a good thing. Like I said. Mitch McConnell and uh, Paul Ryan are on the side of Hologram Hillary and apparently want her installed. I have no other way, nothing else that they can think of other than they want the election overturned, despite their claims to the opposite. They claim that's not their intention, but come on. They go run with this fake Russian thing. Yeah, the Russians do hack us. As Rush pointed out, yeah, that does happen. But they didn't do this election. Nobody... It talks about a bunch of different rules, but the point here is that we go from 19th of December to January 6th. Uh, which is about two and a half weeks. They'll give these, uh, the conspirators, I say conspirators, I don't care, the ones who want a, um, or perpetrating this coup d'etat, that gives them plenty of time to mess with the balance mess with the election. This is very, very nasty. I I can't believe this stuff is happening. Of course, I don't know how much access they'll have to it. That might be a problem. But on the other hand, they do have an insider in the House of Representatives named Nancy Pelosi and 
her daughter, so I don't know. I actually don't know whether Nancy Pelosi can get away with um, bringing them in there and messing with things, whether this is kept under armed guard. They're trying to overturn the election, and there's going to be trouble if they do. At least I would hope so. So, we don't know, we won't know until this January 6th date how the electors voted. Unless somebody spills the beans. Now look at this, this one line the state submits conflicting sets of electoral votes to Congress. Two houses acting concurrently may accept to reject the votes. There's a whole bunch of stuff here. So bottom line, it's going to be a real, real rough ride. And we won't even know, we're going to have to sit here and fret. Like I said, unless somebody spills beans, we're going to have to sit here and fret for quite some time. I don't... We're getting into totally unknown territory, so I'm not going to sit here and make any predictions. Other than they do are trying to over, overturn the election. That I know for sure. But as far as what's going to happen with this, it looks like it's too complex. And I don't know when the Congress will even announce how this... Uh, what the results were I, I suppose I, I'm reading this they'll probably announce it to the press on January 6th hopefully so there you have it so this January 6th date is extremely important 19th is extremely important too and time's working against these people as far as 19th. Because they don't have a lot of time to sway enough electors to accomplish their wicked goals. Well, like I said, I don't know enough about inside the Congress to know whether uh, Nancy Pelosi to get her daughter and the others in there to mess with things or not. Oh, she would if she could. Well, I don't know if she has the ability. This is a wicked, wicked person. These are wicked, wicked, wicked people. I'm Artifacts of Mars. Thanks for watching. This has been an update on the uh, coup that we have in progress. I am going to be watching this closely. Thanks for watching.